We're going to start a brand new series today, but I wanted to welcome all of our guests. If you're a guest here today, we're so glad that you were here. We're hoping you might come, and we've been praying for you. We hope that you are encouraged and inspired and get a, become a part of what God's doing here in the lives of people. I also want to welcome everybody who's watching right now at TurningPointChurch.tv from all over the nation. Turning Point, say hello to our friends. Who, wherever you may be, we welcome you today right here. On the south side of Atlanta, it's pretty powerful when you think about the modern technology that we're able to leverage the message of Christ uh, to, to many people uh, beyond our walls here today. And we are starting a series called Legacy. What, what do you think about when I say the word legacy? I looked up the definition, and it means, to, it means something transferred or transmitted to us from a predecessor or someone who came before us. And maybe, maybe you didn't get a, a, a legacy, perhaps, that you, uh, that you wanted, uh, because a lot of times we don't have a lot to do with that. We, we, we can't determine what's handed to us, but you know what I found is that through Christ and through, through faith in Him and His Word and His power, we can pass off something to the next generation uh, that's even greater than what we have experienced. And when I think about the word legacy, it just I remember hearing about this probably... I don't know, 2000, 2002, 2003, and it just, it really, really resonated within me, and, and I began to pray about it and think about it and, and, and see God's desire for all of us to live life in such a way that we leave a legacy for those coming after us, but also the one coming back for us. And, and in the series, that's what we're going to talk about, is how do I do that? What, what does that look like? What does it mean to leave a legacy. Well, first off, we think about uh, living life in such a way that we are uh, uh, aiming our lives to impact the next generation because I think sometimes we, we have, uh, in generations previous, maybe thought about just our generation. And I think God is a God of the generations. And I think He's restoring this vision uh, for, for generational. That's why I love Turning Point. Because we have as many as three generations worshiping in one house. And to me, that's just a phenomenal testimony of what God's doing uh, in our church, and I love that. I love, I love that it has that effect and impact because I believe that is the heart of God. But, but in my foyer, uh, I thought about my children. Back in 2008, we took this picture, and in the foyer of our home uh, is this picture, and there's this word that says legacy. And, and it, for me, it was to remind me that I've got little eyes watching me. That, that when I live my life, when I live my day, I live my week, I want to make sure that I never forget that, that I'm living for the glory of God. Yes, to, to glorify Him, but also to make a way for those coming after me. And, and, and I think God has wired us, every single one of us, to, to live life in such a way. Like I think there is a desire in us to live a life beyond limits, to do something significant and extraordinary that's bigger than us. But how do we do that? How do we, how do we, how do we get there? Well, I, I started thinking about our church over the last couple of years. And I've thought about how we're 11 years old. Uh, I'll be 45 uh, in this upcoming spring. And so I'm kind of like, I don't know, I think halfway. I'm kind of like halfway home. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just kind of prophesying. I'm going to be 90 years old if, if the Lord doesn't come back. But I just, I start, th you start thinking something. When you hit that, this, this area, uh, I think we just begin to really evaluate what, what's it going to be like. And so I started thinking about what's our church going to look like when we pass it off, for those of you who, who've taken ownership and you've bought into the vision of the house here at Turning what what do we want to pass off to our children uh, when we turn it over to them? Because the sad truth is, is that I think sometimes in our church culture, in our great nation, and thank God for our generations before us. We thank God for our heritage. But I think if there's one thing that we can learn from the church before us is that we honor them, we've got to begin to think generationally. And because I think we haven't so much as the church, uh, I think we, we've seen the devastating results because I'm saddened to know that 3,500 churches a year in America are closing their doors. 90% of churches in our country are in decline. And, 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 and so I think it's important that we figure it out. And, and I think it's important that we aim and, and present the gospel uh, and the vision uh, of Jesus Christ in such a way that people can get excited about the house of God. And that's why I love what God's doing here at Turning Point because we, we've seen so many people uh, get excited about God and get excited about worship and, and getting excited about what God's doing. In fact, 
We've seen so many people, uh, especially over the last couple of years, just lives change, souls making decisions to follow Christ, people getting baptized, people serving on a dream team, figuring out how to get connected in small group. And this past year, uh, we, this year, we have been recognized. This is something we need to celebrate. We've been recognized by Outreach Magazine as the 48th fastest growing church in the entire nation. And so let's give, can we give God the, the praise for that today? And, and I don't say that to boast. I say that because that's something that we need to celebrate. We need to get excited, not just that Turning Point's growing, but that the church of the Lord Jesus Christ is growing, it's vibrant, and that God is establishing life-giving churches because I believe the local church is the hope of the world. Like, I think it's God's plan to save the world. And so I have a passion for the house of God. My life was changed in the local church and still is being changed in the local church. And so I want us to think about in this series... What does that mean for me? What is that, what is that all about? And how do I live life in such a way? Because I think God, I think God wants us to leave a legacy. And in Ephesians chapter 3, it says this: God's purpose was to use the church to display his wisdom in its rich variety that all the unseen rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. What does that mean? I think that means God wanted to display how awesome he was by taking broken people, putting them back together again, and using them in such a way that he builds his kingdom and brings honor and glory to his name that just confuses the heck out of the unseen world. Like God is going to do something significant through a people who, who are trusting him and coming to him and being transformed and living this life in such a way that it displays the wisdom and the glory of God. Ephesians 3.21 said this. It said, Glory to Him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. Amen. And and, and I like this because Paul's amening himself. Sometimes when you preach, you have to amen yourself. So, glory to God in the church forever. Amen. That's good preaching. Glory to God in the church forever. For every generation, like that's, that's what God's desire is, is to bring glory to himself in the church. It's his bride. It's his house. It's his body. And, and so I think we, we, we need to really think about what's, what's my part. What is, what is that all about? How does, how, does, how does my life matter in this grand scheme of things when you think about the church? So in this series, uh, what I'm going to do, if you're new to our church, I think this is going to stir you to kind of awaken, awaken to this high call that God has called you to live life differently, that God has a high call for you, and that we are called to live a life worthy of this call. So I pray that it will challenge you and inspire you to dare to believe God could use you significantly in your generation. And also during this series, we're going to show you some of the ways that we're impacting not only not only in this house, but in our, in our community, in our, in our nation, and in, our na- in the nations of the world. How your giving, how your faith, your, your, your obedience to the vision and helping build the church is not only helping Turning Point being a, a, a growing church, but it's impacting our community. It's impacting our nation and the nations of the world. So it's going to be a really exciting series where you kind of get a glimpse of all that that we're doing here at Turning Point. And I pray that you'll be so inspired that you'll join and be a part of what God's doing. And I'm also going to show you the next phase of what God has for us coming up in the upcoming year as I reveal to you our new plans for our new expansion of our campus where we're going to add about 24,000 square feet to the back of this building and we're going to be able to facilitate and reach at least 1,500 people in one service every week. And we're going to reach thousands and thousands of people for the glory of God. And and so in this, ser- it's going to be a fun series. I, pr- I pray that you'll be here every week. And, we're, and I want you to be in prayer about what, what can me and my family do to be a part of leaving a legacy in the earth. So when, when I talk about legacy, let me be clear. I'm not talking about notoriety. I'm not talking about building a name for yourself or you are famous. No, this is about making Jesus famous. This is about living life in such a way that people see Jesus Christ through your life And through all that you do. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 4. Because we're not motivated to be famous. We're we're motivated to live a life. As Ephesians 4 says, I urge you, live a life worthy of the calling you have received. 
In Turning Point, I am urging you to live a life worthy of the call. If you've called upon the name of the Lord, if you call yourself a follower of Christ, I am urging you to live life in such a way that it's worthy of the calling. In other words, you are aiming your life, your decisions, your, your, your energy, your efforts, everything is pointing to the fact that you realize you have a high calling from God, that it's not just to be on a platform and preach or say, no, it's the high call that God has for you, your family, in your generation. And as you read Ephesians 4, it's powerful. I encourage you to go back and read that because he begins to talk about character and what that looks like. And then he talks about everybody's got a different grace or a, or a charis. There's this gift that every single one of us have and, and how God's given gifts to the church and pastors, prophets, evangelists, pa teachers. And, and he goes on to talk about how they're going to build up the people of God to do the work of ministry. And then when we all do our part, how the house of God and the body of, of Christ flourishes and how that's God's will that we all grow can I tell you, God's will is that his church grows. And the church can't grow, can I tell you, unless we grow individually. And every single one of us have a high calling from God. And so we're going to be stirred to answer this and live life in such a way to where we know we are living a life of significance. But I, I thought about, have you ever wondered what motivates us? Have you ever wondered what, um, what motivates us to action? Well, I was, I was looking into this, uh, this, this thought because, you know, when I, when I came to Christ and finally surrendered my life to Him and, and changed direction, and, and here's what I know, when I changed direction, God changed my heart, you know what I mean? And, and, and so I, I remember having this motivation. I had this motivation to figure out what God's will was for my life. I had this motivation to figure out what my, my call, like what's my purpose? And I think that's a, a, an old question for, for mankind really is what on earth am I here for? Like, what's the meaning of life? And after I came to Christ, I knew it had to be more than just church. Like, I knew God had a purpose for me, and I was motivated by the Holy Spirit to figure out what are my gifts, what's my calling, what, what's my purpose, and then had this determination to figure it out and live it out. And, and so that's my prayer is that through this series, it's going to ignite something inside of you to where you realize you are called to live a life beyond yourself. Like, you're, you're called to do something significant, but when you think about the human needs that we have as people, there was an interesting study done. It's just a theory. But this gentleman uh, named Maslow, he studied people. He studied great leaders. He studied uh, people in general. And, and he discovered through these studies and these, these uh, I guess, investigations and, and polling and just this, this theory, uh, and it's called, it's called the hierarchy of needs. And basically, he, he tried to identify some basic needs that we have as people that because we have these needs, it motivates us into action to meet those needs. And so I want to show you these because I'm going to tie. So it's going to be a little information heavy, but it's going to tie to this point that I want to show you the greatest need that we have, I believe. And it always points us to the Word of God. So let's look at the, the, uh, the, these, these needs. And here's the first need that, that was discovered is that we have physical needs. In other words, we all have a need for air, food, water, shelter, warmth, and sleep. Like, that's a need, and when we don't get it, you know, that's why you go to your fridge seven times. <laughs> same thing. <laughs> You're hoping that something different is going to be there, but it's the same thing. And there's this need <laughs> that we have, and 85% of people in this study or this poll said that those needs were being met. Here's the second thing is safety needs. And that's why we have, a, we have a desire to be protected from the elements. We have a desire for security or order or law. Or, it's why we lock our doors at night. It's why some people stay in a bad job because at least it brings security. Uh, they're afraid to step out because they don't know if they'll get another job. So there's this safety need that drives us to action. 75% of people felt like that was being need, uh, met. Here's the third one. Love needs. Everybody has a need to be known and needed. Everybody has this desire to belong. And that's why we have small groups at Turning Point. Like it's beyond the weekend experience so that you can find people to do life with, other believers, where you can be, where you can be loved and served and prayed for and you can connect and you can serve and love other people. And, and it's just this need we have to be known. It's why, it's why uh, we have social media is such a big deal. That's why people check their Instagram and their Facebook to see how many people like their stuff because we have this need to, to be loved to be known and needed. 50% of people said they felt like that need was being fulfilled. Here's the fourth one, is an esteem need. Esteem needs. It's this need for achievement. It's this need for rec recognition. The need to be complimented. 
You know, you like it when someone notices that you had a different jacket on or maybe you've lost a little bit of weight or, or maybe you just look, I don't know. But we have this need to be complimented, uh, which is why we look in the mirror every day. It's why you looked in the mirror, hopefully, before you came to church. And somebody said, I don't ever look in the mirror. Maybe, maybe it's a good idea if you do. Like, <laughs> you know, it's, it's not a bad thing to, to look in the mirror. But we have these esteem needs. Now, these first four, it was interesting because these are what, what he called deficiency needs. In other words, these are these four basic needs uh, that we are motivated to, to, to get and to, to have met. And here's what I want you to know is that God wants to meet those needs. Like, God created you. He's going to meet all your need according to what? His riches and glory. So there's a loving God that wants to meet our needs. But here's what we need to know is that many times if we just get stuck and focused on our needs, we can get, we can get locked down into living a life where it's all about me. And, and it's all about me making it to the end of the week. It's about just barely, barely getting by. And I'm just here to tell you, God did not create you, save you, and redeem you so that you could just eat by and kind of get by. He saved you and redeemed you so that you could live a victorious, overcoming life of abundance and fulfillment. Where you live a life of significance that impacts the world around you and the generation coming after you. Come on, say amen if you believe that. He did. And so we got to recognize that. we got to recognize that. Here, here's the next four. These next four uh, were actually uh, expanded at a later date beyond uh, the first four. And there's four here that are actually growth needs. Let me show you what I mean. Uh, I, again, I'm going to use this to point us to a purpose that I think is a desire that we all have inside of us. Here, here's the fifth one is a cognitive need. In other words, we have a need to understand. That's why we like to watch Planet Earth or Shark Week. You know, we, we like documentaries. There's just a need in us to, there's this need. I, I want to understand. I want to understand how, how to. That's why we, you know, you have the how-to workshops. You have the TV shows where they're breaking down kitchens and showing you how to. There's just this cognitive need that we have. The sixth one was they referred to it as an aesthetic need. An aesthetic need. In other words, there was this appreciation for beauty. That's why you probably, uh, I don't know if you do, but I like, to, I like to walk on the beach. Or you like sunsets or sunrises or full moons. Like You just have this appreciation for nature. People like to hike. You just like the landscape or a skyline. That's why you cut your grass and edge your lawn. It's because there's this, this desire for uh, aesthetics that you and I seem to want to enjoy. And so people are motivated to do that. Here's the seventh. And at one time, they thought this was actually the highest, highest level of li li living was this, what they called self-actualization. And it's when people realize uh, why they were made. In other words, it's recognizing the potential that you have. It's recognizing the potential that you have. It's why you don't like to come in second place. <laughs> it is. In, in other words, it's, it's trying to have this optimal experience in sports and, and in academics, I mean, think about how, how sports are today and, and, and school. Just since the time you played sports and were in school, think about the level of commitment and training. Because there's this, there's this thing about maximizing your potential. And, and people uh, are, are wanting to do that. That's not a bad thing. My point is, is that only 2%, when polled, only 2%. Of our culture says that, that that's being met. Like only 2% feel like they are fulfilling their potential. Only 1% of college students said that they were, fulfill, were, were experiencing this. And here's why I think it's because they're trying to do it without God. You see, until you realize you were made by God and for God, life will not make sense. The dots will connect when you accept the fact that you were made by God and for God for God. And, and we want to help you do that. At Turning Point, we have a process called Next Steps. And it's how you get connected to the church. Today is, is 101. And then we also want to help you discover your gifts. We want to help you discover your personality, how you're wired. Because we believe that your design reveals your destiny. Like, like you're wired for a purpose. You were handcrafted for a specific purpose. And we want to help, help you discover that because it brings a, a source of fulfillment. But that's not the only thing. It's not just about self-discovery. It's not just about recognizing. Let's look at this number eight here, what they called transcendence needs. And they say that this guy was saying that the greatest need that he has found is when people look beyond themselves 
to make a difference in the lives of other people. And I find that interesting. I find it interesting that when, when, when even doctors and, and the specialists and the experts study the human being, that they came to this realization of what I think God has always tried to get to us, is that we are ultimately fulfilled when we live our lives making a difference in the lives of other people. Let me say it like this. Here's what I know and I've experienced, and I believe that what I make happen for others, God will make happen for me. Like there's just something about this kingdom where, where we give and we receive. If we want to go higher, we got to go lower. Is anybody listening to me? I mean, like there's this, this thing where we have our deepest need met when we focus not on meeting our needs, but we're trying to focus on meeting the needs of other people. That's why you'll see uh, doctors who may live in Beverly Hills give up their practice and go to the inner city of Chicago and work on needy children, or go to India and, and, and give, give medical attention. They could be making millions of dollars, but they give it all up because they realize, you know what, money, status, and stuff is not the thing that ultimately brings fulfillment. It's having compassion on hurting humanity and using my life to help somebody else. Like, that is the thing that brings the greatest fulfillment. And what I'm saying to you today is that's how we live a life in such a way that we leave a legacy for the next generation that's coming behind us. So if we think about that truth, if we think about this, this idea that the greatest way to live our life is ultimately about doing something beyond ourselves, it's about living a life beyond limits because that word transcendence means extraordinary. It means beyond limits. And I believe there are people here today, you don't want to just live a normal, mediocre life. You want to live a supernatural, abundant life beyond limits. Like you want to do something that's bigger than you. There's something inside of you I think that God has put there. And what I want to do is I want to stir that up. I want to call that out of you. And that's why I'm calling you, Turning Point, to live a life worthy of the call. Like, get stirred up to figure it out. That it, that it would awaken you to come into agreement with God. That you would come into alignment with heaven. So that you could fulfill the assignment that God has for your life. Because when you do, that's when you're hitting on all cylinders. And that's when I think the dots can kind of connect. So the, here, here's what we're going to do, is we're going to look at three things we can do to live beyond ourselves. But I want you to understand the idea of church. Listen, the idea of church is not entertainment. It's not. The, the goal of church, the goal of this environment, this atmosphere, is for me to equip and inspire you. To see people come to Christ, absolutely. But as your pastor, Ephesians 4, if you keep reading, says that I am called to equip you to do what God's called you to do. Because you have a purpose. You have a part. You have this opportunity to live this life worthy of a call that's beyond limits and to do something extraordinary. And the only way we can do something extraordinary is when we serve an extraordinary God. And he takes our ordinary and puts his extra on it. Amen, everybody. And, and so how do we do that? What does it look like? Well, I know for me personally, when I think about my life before Christ, um, you know, I think God definitely wants to meet our needs. But when I began to realize, you know what, not only does God want to meet my needs, he wants to use me to make a difference in the lives of other people. And the moment that I began to stop focusing on me, and I began to focusing on hurting humanity, the Bible says in Isaiah 51, I think when we do that, he causes our healing to spring forth. He causes something to happen in us. And I, and I think now, when I was before Christ, there was a reason why I couldn't wait to get off of work and get hammered, because I hated my life. There's no, no wonder that I looked forward to Friday and hated Monday because I hated my life. And it's because I wasn't fulfilling my purpose. I, I knew that there was something inside of me that was not being fulfilled, and it was because God had called me to live a life and to be uh, in a place where I live a life worthy of the call to make a difference. And for the last 20 years, I've had the awesome opportunity to help make a difference in the lives of people. And so I want to let you know today, that God has more for you. You're not created for mediocrity. You were created to live a life of significance. And regardless of what you've done or where you've been, God can still heal you, restore you, and use you in your generation. Look at, look at Proverbs. I like this. Proverbs 9. It says, leave your impoverished confusion and live. Leave it. Leave it. Walk up the street to a life with meaning. In other words, let go uh, of what you've called life and begin to embrace the idea 
of God's life. And so when we started Turning Point, I wanted to be a part of a church that was living at this highest level. I wanted to be a part of a church that was living beyond its limits. I wanted to be a part of a church that would experience a move of God. And can I tell you, no longer do I have to wonder what that would be like because I believe, Turning Point, we are in a move of God. Like we are living in this highest level. And if that's the kind of church you're looking for, you found the right place. Like, if that's what you want to be a part of, you're in the right place. I believe God brought you here not by accident. It wasn't that somebody just said, you need to check out Turning Point. I believe God Almighty ordained your steps because he has something significant for you in the house. Amen? Like, there's something significant that God has for each and every one of us. And, I, and we're going to discover what that is through this series. And I honestly believe that the world is waiting for change. And can I tell you? I think the people of God are the change the people of this world need to see. Like it's letting them see Jesus. And at Turning Point, we don't want to just tell people about Jesus. My prayer every week when we pray at Saturday is, Lord, let them see Jesus. Like I want them to experience. I was talking with somebody at our fall festival Friday night, which, by the way, we've had about 3,500 people show up on Friday uh, on our campus. So thank all of you who served to make that possible. It was powerful. But... One of, the, one, of the, one, of the, one of my most uh, memorable moments was when I was talking to a gentleman. He said, you know, this is our one-year anniversary. He said, we came to this fall festival last year, and now we're serving at it. And we've been changed. I said, so tell me a little bit about your background. Have you ever been in church? He said, not ever. He says, but I came that one Sunday, and I've not stopped coming since. To me, that's powerful. To me, that's the goal. To me, that's why we do what we do. And so, Amen. That's because you give, you serve, and you're a part of something dynamic. So I just want to stir you up to help you understand what, what, what it is that God's called us to do. Because I think now more than ever, man, with, with, with the, just the wars and rumors of wars and racial tension and sicknesses and just all kinds. I mean, it's hot out there, y'all. And can I tell you, the Bible says that darkness is going to cover the earth. Like, it's not going to get better. It's going to get worse, but the darker it gets, the brighter the people of God are going to shine for the glory of Jesus. But we've got to say, yes, I'm, I'm willing to shine for you. So how do I do that? Let me, let me give you three things that I think we can do together and change the world as we know it. Because I believe the time is short. I really do. And I think people are hungry. I love it when people, I, I think if people could just get to this place and get into this environment, man, something gets on them. Can I tell you what that is? One moment in the presence of God can change anybody. One moment in the presence of God can change somebody more than 10, 10 years of series. And that's why we want the presence and the power of God in this place. But, but what do I got to do? How, how do I live a life beyond limits? I'm glad you asked. Let me give you three things. Number one, love God passionately. I know that's, oh, what else? No, 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 just as your pastor, the thing I want most is for you to be closer to Jesus. Amen. If I can just get you more in love with him, I have succeeded as your pastor. Because he's your source. He is your source. Like, I'm going to be an encouragement and a voice in your life. But Jesus, at the end of the day, is the vine. We are the branches. Apart from him, we can do nothing. So if I can get you connected to the source of life, and, and if I can get you connected and get you closer to Jesus, listen, he's going to transform you. He's going to mold you and shape you and empower you. But we've got to love God passionately. And here's what I know. God created you and I to be passionate about things that we love. And it's okay to be passionate about some things. That's all right, because I know we're passionate. But can I tell you, no one gets more passion than Jesus. Love God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength. Like, love God passionately. If you want to live a life beyond limits, we love God passionately. I think it's the real secret to everything because it's the right motivation. Because he's going to give you godly ambition. In other words, you're not going to go out here and try to live a life of significance for yourself, but you're going to come out here and live a life of significance for the glory of the one who called you. And when we think about this, uh, I think the reason why it's important for us to be close to Christ is because he has the book on our life. Like, he has the assignment for our life. And, and he has a dream for our life. And if we want to know the dream, we've got to know the dream giver intimately. Like, God wants to talk to you. God wants to commune with you. God wants an active relationship. Jesus Christ did not die and rise again for religion. He died and rose again for relationship. 
And he wants an active, intimate relationship with you as your father. And, and that's why we can be sons and daughters in the house and be about our father's business. And, and I think that's kind of the idea. But I, when I, looked at, uh, I look at Acts chapter 17, Paul used this as a way to witness to the lost who were far from God. Look at this. My goodness. I got five minutes. From one man, he made every nation of men that they should inhabit the whole earth. And he determined the time set for them and, and the exact places where they should live. Think about that. God decided in 2014 when he wanted to carry out his will for Henry County, he looked at you and said, I want you in Henry County in 2014. You're the person, you're the family, you're the church that I want to use to advance my kingdom. Like God preordained that. Think about that. God did this so that men would seek him and perhaps reach out to him for him, for he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. Like God puts this internal desire inside of all of us that says, what, what are we here for? And he does that so that we'll seek him. He does that so that we will reach out for him. And the good news is that he's not far from us. It's not like he wants to hide it, but we do have to ask and seek. And we have to, to come to him and find it. Look at Colossians. For everything, absolutely everything, above and below, visible and invisible, everything got started in him, watch this, and finds its purpose. Where? In him. It's only in Jesus that you can live and move and have your being. It's only in Christ that you can find your purpose, and that comes from loving him. He's put a destiny on the inside of you, and you're not an accident. You're not a mistake. God knows exactly what he's doing in your life. Look at Ephesians. I love it. For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works. Can I tell you, God's got some good things for you to do. And the Bible says that he created them. Look, he prepared them in advance. So before you got your name, before you entered earth, God already created a plan for your life. Like God's thought more about our lives than we have. See, God didn't create uh, you and then create a plan. God created this life of significance and then wired you and shaped you and already put the gifts and the talents and the abilities in you to fulfill what he's called you to do. And until we fulfill what he's called us to do, we can never be truly fulfilled. God's called you to live a life of significance, and it starts by loving God passionately. Here's the second thing. Serve others selflessly. Serve others selflessly. Remember, I said it's the highest level of living. It's when we serve others. Because God loves people. And when we serve people, we're serving the thing that God loves most. That's why we serve others. That's why Jesus said, I did not come to be served but I came to serve and give my life as a ransom. In fact, Jesus said serving is not a stepping stone to greatness. In the kingdom of God, in the eyes of Jesus, serving is greatness. So we've got to serve others selflessly. I think it's the secret. That's why 1 Timothy 6 says this. Command them. Command them. How about that for some preaching? Like I'm not even asking you. Paul told Timothy, command them. Command them to do good to be rich in good deeds and to be generous and willing to share. Why? Why? Why do we need to do good and be willing to share? Well, because we need volunteers and the church needs... No, no, no. Watch. Look at the second part. Look at this. In this way, everybody say in this way. They lay up treasures for themselves. Come on, some of us need to lay up. You lay up treasure for yourself. When you're freely giving and sharing and serving, you're laying up treasures for yourself, a firm foundation for the coming age. Can I tell you, there's a kingdom coming that's never going to pass away. M rust and moth can't destroy. Thieves can't steal it. That's why it says, hey, I want you to serve others. Give. Give of your time. Give of your energy. Give of your resources. Don't hold on to that stuff because you can't keep it. You can't take it with you, but you can send it ahead. Come on, somebody. You can do it. And look at what he says. I I'm, I'm going to ignore that clock for just another minute i got to get this to you. So that they may take hold of life that's truly life. Listen to that. The reason we give, the reason we serve, is so that we can take hold of real living. You see, I don't give because the church needs my money. I give because it helps me to grab a hold of true life. In fact, our dream team, we couldn't pull these services off without our children's ministry, our cafe team, our parking team, our ushers, our worship team, our tech booth. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand for our dream team today. And, 
and they're serving. And so I'm calling you. Hey, you want to change the world? I think we've got a great cause, a great plan here at Turning Point. And, and I'm asking you to consider to join us. Help me build this house. And let's change the world as we know it. The hour is short. The time is here. The harvest is ripe. But the laborers are few. But I believe there are people in the house that God has called you and planted you to live a life of significance. And you've got to love God and then serve God others because there are people who are waiting on you to answer the call of God in your life. Can I tell you there were 10 years in the wilderness where I spent my life wasting it all the time God had called me to you. So thank God that somebody was praying and serving in a local church so that when I walked in the presence of God was there. I heard the word of God preach and my life was changed. Can I tell you God wants to birth some things through you and it starts in the house of God. God wants you to leave a legacy. I, I've got to close. Mark 8, 35. If you try to keep your life for yourself, man, you're going to lose it. Look at this. But if you give up your life for my sake, and for the sake of the good news, you're going to find true life. You want to truly live? Man, love God passionately. Serve others selflessly in the house of God. Find your place on the dream team. Find your place somewhere in the house to serve 48th fastest growing in the church. Listen, God is sending us people, and, and that means God's giving us opportunity to serve those who are yet to come. And as we end this year of 2014, man, I believe 2015 is going to be our greatest year ever. And I'm calling you to live a life worthy of the call. Find your gifts. Find your place. Do your, I know we're busy. I know we got things going on. But can I tell you, when you begin to leverage God's agenda for your life, I promise you, you'll see him show up in your life. Serve others selflessly and lastly live life intentionally live life intentionally be a person of purpose can I tell you you don't just kind of stumble and coast into your destiny you live with purpose in every step and I believe we're a people of purpose with purpose and I believe this this church I'm not saying it's the only church I'm just saying it's one church that I believe God's hand is upon and I'm asking you to consider that. Maybe some of you have gone through the dream team and, and you, for whatever reason, stopped serving. I'm calling you back. Can I tell you that the world needs you? Your church needs you. Your community needs you. Your nation needs you. Your family and your children, I promise you, there's nothing greater than fulfilling God's will for your life with your family and to leave a legacy for those coming after you and the one coming back for you. I want to ask you to bow your head and pray with me. Acts 13, 36, David's testimony, man, this is my aim. This is my aim. For when David had served God's purpose in his own generation, he fell asleep. He fell asleep. And I just want to know, are you ready to change the world? Are you ready to fulfill your purpose? Fulfill your potential? to live a life beyond limits, to make your mark in this world for Jesus and leave a legacy for those coming after us so that they can go further faster. Like I really believe we're raising up the generation that will see the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I can't think of anything better to give my life away for. So isn't it time that you seize the vision? Isn't it time that you take a step and make your move? I believe the nations are crying out for the people of God to say yes. Maybe you're here and you say, Mike, you know what? I've never surrendered to Christ. I've never made him the Lord of my life. I'm not fulfilled today. Like I, I've tried to fill my life with stuff, but I realize that I need the love and the grace of Jesus Christ. What do I do? Well, the Bible uses this word, and it just says, if you'll repent. That just means change direction. If you'll change direction, man. Call upon the name of the Lord and trust Christ. He'll change your heart. It's a supernatural exchange. It's a beautiful exchange. He takes our sin and gives us a pure heart, a righteous heart. And now we can have a power to serve and honor, to live a life worthy of the call. And it starts with believing in your heart and confessing with your mouth. I'd love to invite you to do that. Maybe you're here today and you've gotten off. You're not serving God today, but you know 
You know that you're called. You know that you have a high calling and, and, and maybe something happened. Maybe you got hurt in a church. Maybe somebody disappointed you. Maybe somebody let you down. I don't know. But can I tell you, if you're still breathing, you still have a purpose. God's not done with you yet. Why don't you take a step of faith today and make a declaration? I am recommitting to love God passionately, to serve others selflessly and live with intentionality. I'm going to leave life and leave a legacy. If that's you, would you just lift up your hand and say, Mike, that's me. Pray for me. That's me. Come on, hands are going up. Don't be, yeah, yeah, hands are going up. Thank you, God. All over the place. Thank you, Father. Thank you, God. I see you. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you, Father. Awesome. Put your hands down. I'm just going to lead you in a prayer. But by raising your hand, you, you've declared, I believe that Jesus is Lord. You've declared that you believe and trust that he is risen, that you're going to surrender your life. And maybe you could just say something like this. Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. I believe you died for me. I believe you rose again. And I surrender to your love. And I commit to love you passionately. And to be open and to do your will. To bring you glory with my life and my generation. In Jesus' name, amen.